Welcome to Old Iron Machine Works and welcome to all my new subscribers. I appreciate you stopping by. This video, video will be building this little flex shaft buffer. Um, it's built out of a bunch of miscellaneous parts that I've uh, accumulated. But before we get into the video of building this, I got a couple other things I, I want to take care of. Okay, I got a new sticker. Max Grant, he's from Australia, the Swan Valley Machine Shop. I really enjoy his channel. I'm sure, I'm sure if you're watching my channel, you've already watching his. Uh, but he does some great work. I'm a little envious that he's much farther along with his new shop <laughs> than I am with mine. But anyway, I'm going to add it to one of my sticker walls. Put them right under Randy Richards. Anyway, Max, I appreciate it. Okay, I got it. some more stickers from Maddie's workshop. He's from South Wales, Australia. And I got some stickers and a really cool magnet. In fact, let's see here if we can uh, if we can stick the magnet up. Let's see. We'll put that right there, and we'll take one of the stickers, and we'll put him right by Max Grant, which is also from Australia. He's doing some nice work on his channel, so I definitely recommend, uh, you know, go check it out. Maddie's Workshop. Okay, a while back I picked up this KDK tool holder, tool post, which you can see is pretty good size. And it actually came with two of these. These take the two and a half inch boring bar. And what I want to do is I recently picked up a DA Aloris tool holder, which is a big boy. And doing some measuring and looking at the dovetail on this versus a Loris DA, I should be able to remachine this dovetail to where I could use the spare one on my DA Aloris. So I thought, okay, I need a dovetail cutter that'll do it. And the first place I thought is to call my buddy Randy Richards, at Randy Richards in the shop, and see if he still has any uh, dovetail cutters um, so I can make that cut. Okay, to show the comparison of the DA, this is an Loris DA, this is an Loris CA which came from Randy Richards also. This is an Aloris CXA. And then you get the little guys. These are the Aloris AXA. So as you can see, <laughs> there's a little bit of difference between the AXA and the DA. Okay, so I reached out to Randy at Randy Richards in the shop about a dovetail cutter, and uh, this is what I got in the mail. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got here. Some more stickers can never have enough stickers. All right, and they come in the fancy box that he does. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, Randy, I don't know. Mm. 
He must have known he was sending it to me. He put it in one of his childproof boxes. Okay. I found out that uh, I'm just a little weak as well. And I just needed to give it a little persuasion. Ah, uh, look at here. How cool is that? Randy, these are awesome. Randy Richards in the shop. Even comes with an extra insert. Ah, uh, that's super cool. Okay, there was something else in the box too. Let's see what else. All right, another sticker. Okay. What do we have here? Okay, that one there, a couple, I think that's his medallions. I think that's what he calls them. Mm -hmm. Can you hold on? And this is one of his knockers. Check it out. Mm, cool. Old Iron Machine Works, Gary. USA 2103. How cool is that? I did talk to Randy and he said that he is making these to sell. And anybody interested, uh, contact him at Randy Richard in the shop, RR in the shop at gmail.com. Anyway, Randy, I want to personally thank you big time. This is super cool. The dovetail cutters look awesome. I look forward to putting them, putting them to work. Thank you very much, Randy. Anyway, there's there's a couple people that I would like to thank. Uh, when I first started my Chuck, my <laughs> my Chuck, my channel, um, Chuck Bomberito at Outside Screwball gave me a shout out, and I definitely gained subscribers from the shout out. Once again, Chuck, I appreciate that very much. And there's somebody else I want to thank right now that also recently gave me a shout out and made a big difference on uh, the amount of subscribers. I gained a bunch of them from it. And that's Tom Lipton at Oxtool. Tom, I appreciate it very much. That was very kind of you giving me the shout out. And hopefully I can put videos out that people will find you know, get some kind of entertainment or something out of them or pick up a, anything, some kind of a tip or learn something. Uh, but anyway, once again, Tom, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, let's get the build and the buffer. Here, I'm just cutting some plate. Um, the old iron machine works, uh, named that way for a reason. Most of the time you'll see I'm just using whatever old material I can find and uh, cutting it to size. I should probably point out to uh, especially my new subscribers um, an awful lot of the work I do um, a very privileged where I can uh, stay after and work on projects at work. Um, a lot of actually most of my projects you're going to see like here you know, it's me just using stuff at work um, while I'm putting my shop together. Um, I think it'll be kind of obvious. You'd be able to tell when I have footage at my own shop, which is under my house, or if I'm actually at work just doing the projects there. Here I'm just making the motor plate, you know, that the electric motor will bolt to.
Uh, this is quarter by one. I need to flatten this part here too. I need it straight from this point all the way out. This is a 1952 Manly 60 ton press, but it's kind of hard to tell by the way it's uh, sitting there uh, wobbling back and forth. <laughs> Um, I need to drive a shim up for underneath one of the, uh, one of the feet. The stand just kind of sits and rocks back and forth. One of these days I'll get to it.
All right, this will be the motor I'll be using for the flex shaft. Uh, it came on an older Walker Turner uh, drill press, a little bench drill press I bought a few years back. Um, but of course, I wanted I wanted a driver line Walker Turner motor on it, uh, so I you know just pulled this DC motor off and uh, put it up under my bench. So it'll actually work uh, great for what I'm using it for. Uh, but it was turning the wrong direction. So on this here, you got the A1 and the A2 line. And then on the right, you got the L1 and L2, which is nothing more than just your 110 power coming in. You're hot and you're common. So to change rotation, you just flip the A1 and A2 wires. And that'll reverse the rotation of the motor. In order to keep paint from getting on the inside of the motor, uh, the inside of the motor looked great. I just kind of filled the cavities up with uh, with paper towel, and then after it's all painted up, you know, then I'll just reach in and pull all of it out.
Okay, the part painted gold is the base. Uh, it's something I saved us from scrapping out at work. I thought it would uh, come in handy for something, not knowing what. Uh, the wheels that were on it were all rusted up, so they were all cut off. And then I had these wheels, all I had to do is just cut off the threaded part a little bit where they'd uh, fit up inside. And then the part I'm screwing on right there, that was all part of the stand. The, the stand had the bottom base, the pipe that I'm tightening up, and then the piece that slid in it. You know, they just needed to be glass beaded. And I did that before I decided to make a video on this project. Okay, I got the motor and the controller all bolted up. What I need to do now is the flex shaft I have is for a half inch shaft and this motor is 5 8 so I just need to make a little adapter that'll just connect from the motor to the flex shaft.
there I'm making a little bracket that I could hang the handle on um, just using some quarter by one flat bar and then I'll cut some pipe and uh, just weld it together There the solid slug is just slightly larger than the handle. So when I press that on that slug, the handle should fit it quite nicely. Okay, here's the flex shaft. It is made by Craftsman. I have no idea how old it is. It's something I acquired a few years back. I think in an estate sale or something. And then on the end of it is just one of the Scotch Bride uh, buffing pads. Uh, the finest I can get, they're the ones that you would normally put on the grinder. Um, and they do an awesome job of uh, buffing parts up. And here's the finished project, uh, all done, ready to try out.
here off camera I was just running around doing some experimenting you can see the before and after and it does not take long for it to polish that up really good um, I could keep a guy busy full-time I think just polishing up pieces of equipment but anyway it uh, it does a, a fine job I have several tools different stuff I use for um, doing different jobs and I just thought this is just adding one more you know one more tool to the tool belt here you can see I'm not spinning it very fast at all really and it's really doing a nice job um, the handles and stuff look way worse than they are uh, that's the nice thing about surface rust you know there's no pitting or anything involved so they don't really take a whole lot to, to clean them up but I think the tool's going to be uh, very very handy anyway I want to thank all my new subscribers um, you know if you like this type of video uh, please give it a thumbs up if you like uh, the content and you're not a subscriber um, hit the subscribe button it's always appreciated anyway as always I appreciate you guys taking the time to check out the video.